All right. Three, two, one, go. We are Paul Leonard and Bryce Graskowski, and this is 20, 20 minutes, minutes of Fitness. Okay, so who's actually working out behind us? No one. Oh. We're, in, we're in the middle of classes. Oh, and we're actually not even doing this as the yeah. class. So welcome to the 22.1. 22.1. Open desk. Dun, 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 Open dun, 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 desk. Dun, 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 breaking news. Sponsored breaking by LaCroix. Yeah. I, or me, I guess, because I bought my own LaCroix. Yeah, you, you bought the... Fuck. Yeah, it's sponsored by us. Yeah, LaCroix, will you sponsor us? I mean, we really like LaCroix. Yes. I don't. I don't fucking like it at all. I, don't, I should, never had one. You should get into it. It's pretty good. I think it's got stevia, dude. It's garbage. No, it's totally nothing sweet. Totally stevia. No sweet at all. Sure. No sweetener. The right. only thing in this is natural I don't essence. Care, dude. Natural okay. essence. What do we got? We got natural 22.2. We got a 15 minute AMRAP of three wall walks. Three wall walks. 12 snatches. 12 alternating dumbbell snatches. 50 pounds for men, 35 pounds for women. Box. Other things for other people. And then box jump overs. 15. Half, half box jump over. Well, it's step back down. step down. No, you could have jumped over it. What? You could jump straight over it. Are you serious? You guys never said that. Hey, man, that's not my problem. Oh. You should have waited for the tip show, which oh. is this. So I didn't know I could jump over it. For real. Yeah. So I mean, that might not have been a good idea, but I would have probably done it just to. Here's some tips, guys. Here's some tips. So just what's the, tip? uh, the big just the big issues with this one is See how it feels? what the box so step downs. For for me, the hardest part was just going fast enough on box jumps. Yes. Because they get slowed down drastically by the step down. Right. So it's a new movement standard trying to take out the rebound box jump. Yeah. Um, I think because Julie Fouché is now head of the CrossFit Precision yeah. Health Garbage. Yeah. So, and she's you know, broken and her she's, legs. And like she's that. all about that dumb Achilles tendon bullshit. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Just kidding. So, yeah. So that's probably what they're looking at. Just take out the rebound so we don't um, get injured. Yeah. It's a good idea. And then the wall walk changed also. Um, Standardized line, which is great for you guys uh, in the affiliates because we don't have to sit there and measure you anymore. Yeah. So it's a good standard because it makes it consistent. It sucks for someone like Ben, who's a Whatever. foot shorter than me. Too bad. And it rocks for someone like me who's a bit taller. Some it, a standard that actually helped the tall guy. It helps anybody over six feet a, a tiny bit. But I don't think it's enough. To, Marginally. It, and it really just equalizes the movement because the movement favors whoever's lighter and whoever's taller is usually heavier so yeah this kind of equalizes it even more so i like it i i thought it was great and mostly it it expedites the entirety of uh friday night lights because measuring yeah you each have to measure everybody and all simple and the bro measurement right yeah so i like that and then the snatches same standard we've always had well it, it they got rid of all the bs from the snatches from a couple of years ago oh, right? the switching now it's of the simplified hands. yeah so it's it's a super simple standard yep. really easy to follow good, good really easy to go fast with it was all right paul choice. you just did it how'd you do um i did seven rounds plus two wall walks e. and uh i so felt pretty good so about you, that so you did roughly two two minutes around on yeah. average um uh velner and what's his name Velner Ol did 11 Olsen. right they did uh one two three four five six they were in their 11th. Okay. And they averaged from, their first round was about a minute, just over a minute, minute four, minute five. And then Noah's last full round was a minute 45-ish. Okay. So Vellner's last round was probably 10 seconds faster than Noah's last round. Once Vellner passed him, he kind of died. So, um, so you're talking about a minute 30 anyway between rounds. A minute 30 gives you 10 rounds. So they got somewhere into the next round so or actually Vellner finished the, the, he finished the 11th. 11th yeah he finished it so and then uh danielle did 12 13. yeah so you're looking at for most people you're not going to be able to maintain 90 second rounds so no. you're really looking at eight rounds as being is is really good i think i would think seven plus i don't think there'll be many over eight yeah i think seven in the normal plus, people realm yeah seven plus is like your your average intermediate crossfitter and then anybody getting over eight you're in kind of the next level and uh somewhere in that seven and a half to more than eight is going to be your 10 percent. i'm thinking right yeah the 10 percent people so uh, i, th I so think it may even be a little lower than that it could be as low as like seven being yeah 
Yeah, seven. Yeah, over seven. Okay, I, I'm, I'd agree with that. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans so out. So, what did you? Uh, what, what are your tips, Paul? I have a bunch. So, so the first tip is to practice your wall walk. Because yep. knowing where you're going to put your hands on the way up and down. Absolutely. I actually chalked up for my first one while my form was really good. Oh, good. So I could good. see where my hands were going to go. So then once Solid. I was tired, I was making sure I'd hit those same spots. Yep. Because and you got to fight to hit those spots. So that was a big one, I think. And chalking up on the first go and yeah, making that's smart. point placements. And I I have marks on, on the floor for me. Yeah. You know, I've already figured that out where. So you don't want to be more than, ideally you want to be, four back to the wall, four steps. So one, two, three, four. And then you're, you're there and then forward three. Three's not as, I mean, the forward's not as important because gravity will help you get there quickly. Yeah. Um, but the uh, ha having those marks going back, definitely a must. Yeah, um, and I was watching for them when I was getting tired. Yeah. I would make sure that my hand landed there. So and the big the thing is step. those fingertips have to be on the, or the, some, some portion of your hands have to be on the line before your rest of your body hits the ground. So you yes. got to make sure you don't overshoot it too. That's true. Because I think a lot of people will, taller people will overshoot it. On, on your first couple rounds, know. I was thinking that that would be a problem. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. Yeah. All right, guys, sorry about that. We lost a little chunk. We had some technical difficulties uh, going outside. Don't really know why, but we were talking about in the start, make sure once your feet are off the ground, pike your butt up. This is gonna help uh, take the load off your low back, right? We don't wanna overextend that, that low back. It's gonna smoke you, especially with those snatches. Uh, if we're doing the snatches a little off, then our low back's really gonna fatigue pretty bad there. So. Pike your butt up. The other one is your head. Don't have your head tip back. Make sure your head is kind of neutral. Um, you shouldn't be looking at the ground in between your hands. You should either be looking at the wall or somewhere between your hands and the wall. So just a nice uh, neutral head position, right? Uh, let's see, the last one is once your fingers are on that line on the way down, you can flop straight down to the ground. Um, I think in previous years we weren't able to do that because you had to put your feet down before the rest of your body hit. But this year, um, you're, it doesn't matter. Your, your body just has to hit the ground at some point and your fingers have to be on that line. Okay, so uh, that's it on the wall walks. Then we're going to move to snatches and we're going to pick up on the, um, the regular podcast on that. We're talking about not dropping the dumbbells. So... Why don't we want to drop the dumbbells? Well, A, the, the owner of the dumbbells will not be happy. Suckers are expensive and they bust the covers off. I get people asking me in the gym, hey, when are you buying new dumbbells because the covers are ripped off? The answer is never. Don't drop them and they'll have covers on them. The other reason is just smooth transitions. You want, you want that smooth transition. Um, and if you're just letting them hit the ground, then you got to move them around and reposition them. So back to the podcast. Mostly it's a dick move, but also if it, if it bounces away, gets away from you, then you've got to, you know, grab it, reset it, all that stuff. So stay, stay under control of that dumbbell. Um, and well, and you want to bounce out of the bottom anyway. Not bounce, that's the wrong word for it. But you yeah, want that tension bounce. in the bottom. Yeah. So you don't want to change hands at the bottom. I, th I think you really need to practice yeah, changing hands you on be, the way down. You should be changing on, on the way down and really below your eyes. Not because of any sort of safety thing. I know they, they wouldn't let you. It's just not efficient. Yeah. Lifting your arm up over your head just tires your arm out that much more. You know, yeah. Your shoulder's just going to get burned out. That's not needed. Your blood flows better with your arm down. Um, the other thing is then you're carrying that dumbbell all the way down. Uh, I would go back to the thing that I did in the first year that we had the dumbbell snatch. Drop from yes. the top. As long as you have strong hands, drop from the top and catch it somewhere around your waist and ride it down. Uh, but only do that if you have pretty good strong hands. I consciously drop it maybe four inches from my yeah. chin to my chest. Yeah, I always at least do that. But in this case, because there's no, no rules, I'm going to dive bomb that sucker. Okay. Uh, but... Again, you need to practice that. I've practiced that for years. Uh, some people, if your grip isn't super strong, you may want to come down, decelerate by hitting your shoulder, getting that little pop, and then transferring down into your hand. So okay. you kind of, kind of like if you were doing uh, the opposite, would be jerking it overhead. Now you're coming down onto the shoulder into that jerk position, and then just tipping it down into your reverse curling it into your hand. Um, so that's if you have like. Uh, you know, Ben's hands, yeah. little baby hands. Those, those cute little guys. 
Also, don't rush through the snatches. No, that's, I believe that's, that's a lot of the, the times you can breathe. Yeah, uh, you breathe a lot on your step down. Honestly. Oh, okay. Um, Which is maybe why I didn't do that good. Then the other thing on the snatches, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other thing on the snatches is use your hips. Or oh, you said that. Yeah, I said that was my first right. tip for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't want to okay. be muscling through that stretch. And then actually another thing is because I'm tall and I have a lot of range of motion to cover, I pull down on my dumbbell. Oh. I aggressively bring See, it. See, I down. wouldn't do that because that's where I'm going to breathe. Yeah. So that's going to give you breath. Then you can move faster on the box. I was trying to beat JT. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> He's got like three feet less to go. Um, and I beat then him on also, the first round of them. When you do the, the using the hips, make sure you're not just bending at the hips, that you're actually still using your knees and yes. squatting that little bit to get like down. Like a quarter squat to it. Yeah, just that's like true. a you know kettlebell swing or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then the last movement is the box jump. The box step jump step down. Yeah. Um, Definitely big change for that is I highly recommend, if you can, stand sideways to the box yep. because it makes it way easier to step down, not having to turn. Yeah. The other one you can do is uh, if this is the box, we're, we're kind of diagonal to it, jumping forward onto it. If you have trouble, like you're not very good at jumping deep sideways, this allows you to kind of jump forward and still get a little bit deeper. And then you have just the same step off. That's if you're not very good at jumping sideways. I like the sideways hop. I think the sideways is where yeah. it's at. But if, again, if you just don't have that leg power, then you may have to do that. Stay low. Absolutely stay very low. Very much so. There's no yeah. reason to go high. There's no reason to extend your hips. There's no reason to get anywhere near there. Yep. And if you're shorter, stay lower. You don't want to be above parallel for your leg. You should yeah, be able to just slide true. your leg over and drop it to the ground. It should be the box jump. The jump up part takes a lot of energy. The down part actually is like a little mini rest. Yeah. So I would, yeah, absolutely. This definitely slows the movement down, but it gives you time to breathe as opposed to jumping over. The other thing you could do is just jump clear over the box. I would only reserve that if it's the last round and the last few seconds and you want to blast them out, but you're not going to have anything left after. Honestly, I wish I knew I could do that, though. Yeah. So it's, it is a good tip to know that you can do it, especially if you're tall. Yeah. Because when you're tall, yep. it's not that hard to jump over the whole thing. And at that last round, right. I would have emptied Burned my tank it, on right. it instead of if, burning through. If you're, like, less than – if you're 5'7 and under, don't do it. That's you're fair. Gonna, you're going to clip your heels and break your back, right? Uh, and let's see. Um With that, the box step up. Let's see. The box jump. Had one more thing on that. I don't know. Another thing might be to be conscious in choosing your boxes. Oh, that's what I was going to say. This box. So we're sitting here with these um, rubber-coated box. boxes, a soft box. Now, I like soft box for box jump over where you could bounce over it because yes. you get that spring. Yes. I do not like them in this because you do not want... to flip over. It's going to flip over. Also, the it's because you're not by being able to bounce off it, you have to drag your feet across yeah, that's it. that's true, too. And this is going to grip. So you don't want something that's going to grip. The smoother the box, the better. Also, heavier box is better. Yeah. Um, and I, I definitely want the heaviest box I can use because I've been flipping boxes lately, doing box jump overs, right? Yeah. Uh, the other thing is your shoes. Is there a standard on the size of the box? Obviously, the height is standard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, is there a minimum width? Yes. 15 by 15. So, so if you have a, and that's what yeah. I was telling Ben, like um, you really want to cut as much as you can out of this you go buy yourself something that's 15 by 15 at the top i have uh one of the metal boxes you know the yeah. ones off the post yeah i have a 24 inch one of those that's probably pretty close yeah so like those those green and black ones yeah. the little plastic yeah. all right we're almost ah. done anyway this didn't start this game Time we lose the phones, we unplug it. Okay, so I'm just gonna back this up just a little yep. bit, and then uh, I'll press record when it seems like a good time. Yeah, I'll point it. I'll do this when I press record. Yep. Those are those are um, sprinkler cover uh, control covers, right? Yeah, those they, 15. They're great because they're about 12 inches tall. They are 14 inches. 14.75 inches uh, across so will not work so they don't actually make the standard because i would have used those okay. so we don't we don't have anything that's a little smaller so we're stuck with a 20 inch by 24 inch i don't think it affected a whole lot honestly yeah it you probably custom would. build a, a box inches. if you wanted to yeah no i'm saying if, I, if if you really are crazy i would 
I'd go and buy some plywood and uh, make, you could stack them, put a post or something going into a stack of plates. Now plates are 17 inches, but they're not, you can't get 15 inches square out of them. Okay. So you don't have the standard. So if you're, if you're seeing people jumping on plates, that's not actually um, RX. I don't think I'd want to jump on plates anyway. I want the nope. smooth surface. I want the, the smooth top. surface, yeah. So that's the only thing that you can really do well with this equipment list is that you can have a smaller box, and that would actually definitely help. Yeah. I, um, I was then, happy with the 24. Yeah, the and then, box. yeah, it's not bad. And then the last thing that you're going to look at for your box jumps, like I said, is sneakers, your shoes. Yeah. You don't want anything too grippy. Um, yeah. Or maybe something with a little more, I don't know, more tread. Is more tread better? Because I tread, I wore grips. just nano tens yeah, or elevens, elevens, and honestly, they were great for it. Yeah. At no point, like I, I was conscious of what shoes I wore because um, I was thinking the wall walks. I wanted yeah, yeah. good traction. You need something good which traction, which was good enough traction for that. Yeah. But also, you want your toes to be able to slide. Yeah. Because you don't want to. Yeah. Be the wall, on the, the way wall down. walks are definitely more important of having traction because ideally you do them in socks on the box jumps. Not that you can anymore; they make you wear shoes. But uh, on the box jumps, those socks would be great. But on the wall walks walk are the wall. horrible. I've and then tried. I also wouldn't want to be too grippy. I was gonna wear my um, my New Balance shoes that have like those sticky soles. Yeah. But I was thinking I don't want to be like slipping on yeah. the wall because my feet don't slide. Right? I think I'm gonna wear these zeros because they're smooth on the bottom, pretty smooth. Although I don't know if smooth is better. No. Because if you I, think about treads on cars, the street tires are less tread. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe more I'll, surface I'll, area is not a good. I thing. will try my uh, Nike Metcon turbos and see how they feel. But uh, nice. So that's about it. Um, trust your fitness and also get get a good a good pace right around. I'm thinking a minute a minute fifteen at the fastest. You're like if you open with a minute fifteen round, don't open with a minute five like everybody else is doing. A minute fifteen and try to keep that and try to stay within about five ten seconds each round and. Maybe you don't fall off that much. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. So that's it. I don't, that's all I got. All right. Anything else in the world of the open or CrossFit or anything else we need to bring up? Uh, no. All no. Right. Well, uh, oh, buy our T-shirts. Go to CrossFitWestWahoo.com. Buy our t-shirts. open T-shirt. Open T-shirt. You'll see that it on me. There's just nothing on the front. You'll see it on me the next, They're open next t-shirts? time, I guess. No. I'd rather it be closed. Shut up. <laughs> Goodbye. Good luck.